Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel, and I know I said heading into this World Cup, we'd probably be limited when it comes to news about Celtic, but today, we've got a few things to talk about, some big things as well, one considering the future of one of Ange Postecoglou's best players, one about Ange Postecoglou himself, and a returning face to Celtic training, one that I'm sure we're all happy about. Let's talk about it all, let's get into it as we head into the Sydney Super Cup tomorrow morning. <laughs> If you haven't already, please make sure to hit like and subscribe. It would be much appreciated on the road to 37,000 subscribers. It's a tough time, you know, we're, we're waiting for news, but today we've been bombarded with it. So as I said in the intro, a few things to talk about and let's dive right into it because we're going to talk about a very serious story with contract negotiations that apparently have stalled with one of Celtic's better players, you would say. Now, I know what you're all screaming at me right now. He's not that great. He's been rotten this season. I agree. He's not been the best this season. We're talking about Josip Juranovic. And so far this season, I'd go as far as to say that Tony Ralston has probably been the better player. But there's one thing I just want to get off my chest straight away. Josip Juranovic is a top, top talent. And he is one of the best players in this Celtic side. There is a reason that he's heading to the World Cup with Croatia. He's going to be starting games at the World Cup for Croatia. And there's a reason that Celtic should be demanding such a high price tag for him last year he was one of the standout players in Ange Postecoglou's side and I think we're looking at a player this year who's maybe had his head turned and that's you know there's no excuses for that you should be playing until whatever happens you know whether you leave the club or stay at the club there's no need to kind of slow down you still look for the best out of them but there is no denying that this is a top talent I've seen so many opinions since the news broke this morning about Juranovic that have basically disregarded him completely um, as a player who isn't good enough who's rotten um, what you know just a lot of opinions that don't make sense to me we know he's a great player and the thing is if he came back from this World Cup break and played a couple of great games opinions would change like mad because we're such a reactionary fan base last year Juranovic showed how big an asset he is to this team he was a gem of a find in fact I'd go as far as to say one of the best findings of Ange Postecoglou's first transfer window um, but how much longer will he be at Celtic that's what we need to talk about here so apparently Celtic are, in quotation marks, braced for a number of transfer bids for Josip Juranovic this coming January when the transfer window opens after contract negotiations negotiations, sorry, stalled with the Croatian right back. Yes, apparently he has rejected a contract extension with the club, which pretty much spells out to me and the rest of us that he sees his future away from Celtic and maybe all of those links in the summer transfer window as I said have turned his head he knows that he could go somewhere else and now it's only a matter of time before Celtic accept a bid there was talks of clubs coming in for him in the, the summer transfer window he stayed with us through the summer transfer window but with the rejection of a new contract that would tie him down to a longer term deal at the club that to me says it looks as though he's off after his brilliant campaign with Celtic last season, there was a number of clubs linked with him in the summer, as I mentioned. Clubs like Manchester United, Atletico Madrid, Chelsea. They, they were some of the sides that were named and in being interested in Juranovic. Um, I'm imagining there will be still big sides who will be interested in him after this World Cup. If he goes out there and has a good tournament, which I imagine he will, um, and if he builds on the performances he's already put on for Croatia on the international stage, there is no denying that the clubs will be interested and they look at him as a guy who's ready to come in tailor-made for a sort of wing-back position. You know, he's, he's 27 years of age, he's, he's experienced now, he's at a good age where people want their footballers to be developed. So he's ready to walk in, there's no denying that, that people will want him. He's currently under contract with Celtic until 2026. That's when his current deal runs out, um, which means... Celtic should be able to get quite a good fee for him. You're talking a sizable amount here. Um, that's a contract that runs up in, what, three years' time um, at the end of this season. So, if I was Celtic, you know, we heard the talk of 15, 20 million pounds for the guy back in the summer. That's the sort of number I'd be expecting Celtic to try and get in this transfer window coming, if not more. Now, I know he's not had a great campaign, but this is where Celtic have to evolve as a football club. And this is the kind of things that were spoke about at the AGM. We signed him for two and a half million quid. Anything above that is profit. That's good straight away. But if we want to evolve, if we want to bring in um, the right money and, and, and create the right sort of representation for our players and our, our, our modern football side under Ange Postecoglou, then we should be trying to get as much money out of this deal as, as possible if he does decide to move on. Um, 
it will be a big test for Celtic as a club, as a business, when the transfer window opens, will we take the first bid coming, will we try and fleece clubs for more, that's what I want to see from Celtic, ideally I would like Juranovic to stay at the club, because I, I do understand how good a player he is, um, I guess the positive is with the amount of money we should bring in, it shouldn't be a hassle to go out and find another top quality right back, and we've already got obviously Tony Ralston here at the club, um, but it is, it's a big test, um, we'll have to wait and see, but turning down a contract, a lot of people are unhappy, um, you know, I, I can kind of understand it when I put myself in his shoes for a minute, you know, Celtic is never the be-all end-all for players, they, they, they need to try and look beyond that, especially if they don't grow up supporting the club or whatever, you know, they want to reach the top level, and to reach the top level, you've ultimately got to move beyond Celtic, so I can understand he is 27, he's not getting any younger, I think if any time the move came around for him, he has to strike it now, you know, while the iron is hot, if he waits another you know, one, two years, there'll be younger guys on people's lists that will probably become priority, so for Juranovic, I think it's understandable, it is slightly annoying, he has only been here a year and a half and he's turning down contracts, but if you put yourself in the shoes of the player, it's sort of understandable. I think that's why he's ultimately saying no to the contract, I don't think he's had any falling outs at the club, I don't think he's realised his full potential at Celtic, I don't think it's anything to, to do with him being fed up, you know, and a lot of people are quickly jumping to that because he hasn't performed as well this season granted he hasn't but i think that you know you, you just need to face the facts that he is 27 years old and probably wants to get that move while he has the chance you know we've seen so many players in the past miss out in big moves and then it's maybe not w went the way they've wanted to for the rest of their career and that's not just to do with celtic that's with anybody so he, he probably wants to take that opportunity while he can and I, I can accept that i really can and he's not exactly leaving us in a position where we'll struggle. You know, we're going to bring in a sizable fee for him if he goes. Um, so we just need to wait and see what happens when more news emerges. Just want to take you back to Ange's comments at, at the AGM a, a few weeks ago. You know, we, we were kind of uh, led into this. You know, we were, they hinted at the idea of our favourites leaving or being replaced. And, and that's the nature of football. And I don't think Ange will have any problem if Juranovic wants to move on. I think that... He strikes me as the kind of character, uh, as a manager who is, is probably expecting this, who relishes this, and it gives him the chance to evolve his team. So I think that Ange will, will take this opportunity to, to move Celtic further on. You know, if players don't want to be here, he'll, he'll look on to the next possible option. And, and with the money that he'll potentially have to spend there, you only have to look as far as the recruitment so far under Ange Postacoglu to know that we're in good hands. We should trust him with his decisions to, to, to sell Juranovic and, and bring somebody else in. Um, and, and this is going to be the story of Celtic while Ange is in charge for however long that may be we're going to constantly see players who are performing to the top level or the best level at this club go go off away and to other clubs we're going to have to face it with Jota with Hatate with all of these players who we, we consider elite talents they're finally going to move on one day and it just so happens that Juranovic is the first of the Ange Postacoglu era to do so we'll see what happens more news will come out towards the transfer window, but no contract for Juranovic. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. So, talking about Ange Postacoglu then, it was a bit of a scare yesterday for some people. Keep your dickers on, that's all I'll say. Ange Postacoglu, new Japan manager? No, doesn't look like it, but there were reports that apparently the Japanese Footballing Association were considering Ange Postacoglu as their next manager. So let's talk about that a little bit. So reports emerged earlier this week that he was on the shortlist to replace the current Japan manager if the World Cup doesn't go to plan. And apparently, um, the technical director of the JFA has already perhaps reached out to Ange Postacoglu, but Ange has given them given them the big N-O. It's a no from Ange. He will not be the next Japanese national team manager. And the Daily Record is reporting, take that with a pinch of salt, but the Daily Record is reporting that Ange Postacoglu isn't considering the role. And the reasoning behind it is because he is building something special at Celtic. Um, so it's not an offer that is tempting him away from Celtic Park. Apparently, there's been similar offers as well, I was reading. And we've obviously heard them linked with every English Premier League job that has come up so far this season. You know, Wolves, Aston Villa, um, Southampton, all these jobs that have opened up so far down in England. Ange Postacoglu's name has been the first one the tabloids have pulled out the hat, but he's went to none of them. And 
I don't want to be full of blind faith like it was with Brendan Rodgers, but I genuinely do believe that Ange has got so much more to do here and before he even considers leaving Celtic. He's done an international management before. He was with Australia, of course, and he was quoted in the media in the past talking about how he actually prefers being in a job where he's with players more regularly rather than the international setup. So I don't think it's a job that he'd be interested in anytime soon. Um, I think he wants to, to build here at Celtic. But we're, in the, we're only in the first few steps of, of the Ange Postacoglu era and I don't think that's something that he wants to abandon so soon um, so we've got European football to focus on next year there's a hell of a lot more recruitment to go on in terms of the players that we have here uh, and to leave that suddenly all behind to, to go to Japan at, at this point in time is just something that didn't really make sense to me and with apparently Ange knocking it back didn't make much sense to him either so if you've seen it and you are worried don't worry anymore I think what this is, is simply more scaremongering. And finally, the last story for today, a returning face to Celtic training and one that I think we'll all be delighted to hear about. Callum McGregor is back in training with the Celtic squad. This image was shared this morning from Sydney as they prepare for the Sydney Super Cup um, tomorrow. I think the first game is quarter to nine kickoff over here in Scotland, but there you go. Uh, quarter to nine in the morning, by the way, not at night. Uh, quarter to nine in the morning. But Cal McGregor pictured back in training. I don't imagine he'll be playing any of the games. I don't know how far away he is from match fitness, but he's uh, back in training and that is a step in the right direction. You know, that's what we want to see. We want to see Cal McGregor back in training gear. We want to see him running, uh, getting getting minutes in the legs and, and probably bounce games and training etc um, so that's really important it's really good to see the captain of the, the club obviously and he's been out since that trip to Leipzig you know that was the last time we've seen Ange Post it's Ange Postacoglu <laughs> the last time we've seen Cal McGregor play for Celtic um, as he went off injured that night so it's been a while you know that was right at the start of October um, but a speedy recovery is looking good hopefully he's back for a competitive return at the end of this month but one step at a time um, but I'm just delighted to see him back in training. And that's it. That's us for today. As I said, a few big stories uh, to cover. But yeah, let me know your thoughts to all of them in the comments below. Tomorrow, Celtic are in action against Sydney in the Sydney Super Cup. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I will be up to watch it. Will I do a watch along stream? Maybe, if I'm not dying. It's pretty early. But we will at least talk about the game afterwards. So don't worry, we'll be here on the channel tomorrow at some point to talk about all of that. Anyway, that'll do us for now, won't it? Thank you. Like and subscribe if you've enjoyed, and I'll see you all next time.